Hi, I'm Elmeter06, and this is my flute fluids tutorial. All of those renders took a lot of time to bake and render, so I hope you enjoyed them. First, you want to make sure you installed Flip correctly. Go to the Properties, then Add-ons, and search Flip Fluids. Make sure to check before continuing. Now that you've ensured that Flip is installed, let's ensure that the right frame amount is set to ensure we don't render more than we need to. Set the max frames to 100, and you can do this in the bottom right of your Blender window. So now let's make a domain, and pretty much all this does just shows where the fluid is limited to moving. So we can just add a cube, and if you're still learning Blender shortcuts, don't worry, I'll walk you through it. Press Shift A, then Mesh, then Cube. With a cube selected, scale it up twice with Shift S. You can hit 2 on your keyboard, and it should scale it up enough. Then let's go to the Physics tab in the Properties menu, and if you install Flip right, you should see the Flip Fluids button underneath the Rigid Body Constraint button. Click the Flip Fluids button, then set its type to Domain. Now let's make an Inflow object. Let's add an Icosphere, and then set its subdivisions to 4, and you can do this in the bottom left side of your Blender window when you add the Icosphere. Go to the Physics tab, select Flip Fluids, and then set that to an Inflow object. Let's place the Inflow object near the top of the Domain. You can click G to grab the Icosphere, then Z to move it along the Z axis. Let's add something for the fluids to collide with. Let's add a monkey head. And then set a subdivision modifier to subdivide by three. On the properties tab, you can go to the little arrow on the subdivision modifier and then apply the modifier. This will not only make the head appear smoother, but it'll also allow fluids to flow over the smooth objects right. With the head selected, go to the Physics tab again, then set the Flip object as well. But make sure you choose Obstacle. I'm going to set up the, the friction to around 0.25. And now we have our Domain Inflow and Obstacle set up. We can bake the simulation. Click on your Domain object again, then scroll up until you find the Bake button. And click on the Bake button and it'll start baking the simulation. Now, it'll look like nothing's happening, but that's alright. You can go to the Flip tab on the sidebar and select Sync to Bake. After clicking this, your mesh should appear now. So while you're waiting for this to bake, you could also hit the subscribe button. It would be really nice, thank you. Um, once baking's done, you can add a material to your fluid and then we can set up the render settings. I'm just going to use Flip's basic water material. You can use whatever you want. If you want to make your own, that's fine. It should still work. Set your camera in a position facing the fluid sim that you like. Then go to the render properties and set up the desired resolution and specs. Then make sure your render region on to slightly speed up the render. I'll be rendering this out at 64 samples on Eevee just to make it faster for the YouTube video, but you can render in cycles or whatever, it's all up to you. But before we render, let's make sure we have the render output is right. I'll be rendering PNGs in a separate directory, create a new folder and set it to render. Then set the output directory to that folder. It's a good quick tip if you can click on the top bar of the file explorer to copy the directory and then just paste it directly into Blender. Once that's pasted in, type a backslash and then set whatever you want your frame names to be I'll be using slash render. And as you render out, you'll see that it creates a new PNG for each frame. The reason you do this instead of rendering all out as an animation is it looks smoother with higher quality. Plus, you can also pause and resume rendering at any time. After a while, your frames will finish rendering, then you can click this plus icon on the top to open a new workspace. This is just Blender's little workspace for compiling video clips or editing everything. This is what I use to edit in actually. I don't use like After Effects or any fancy like Adobe software or whatever. Once you've opened the video editing tab, you can go to the bottom of the screen that shows all those 
black and gray bars and press shift A and then select image slash sequence. And if you do that, a file explorer window will open. See all of my frames right there on screen. So press A to select all and then add the image strip. Now you should see a yellowish bar on the bottom of your screen and that is your frames. And if you want, you can add audio or other stuff to render this out with. However, I won't be doing that. On the top left side of the window, you can see there's more render properties. You can set your output to your project directory or wherever you want your video to render to. And once that's all done, we can get a little deeper into how Blender renders stuff. In the output tab, select your format from PNG or JPEG to FFmpeg video. Now just underneath that output tab, there's a tab called encoding. This controls what you want your outputted format to be. I'll be using an MP4 as my output. So select the MPEG-4 container and let's render. Then you should see your frames flash briefly in a new window. And after they stop flashing, your render is complete. Now you can navigate to your output directory and view your final render. Here's mine. And that's it for your first Flip Fluids render. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Elmator06 out.